In this video, we'll be looking at a type of asymptote called an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote. And slant asymptotes, oblique asymptotes happen when the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. And we'll look at this definition with an example. So let's consider the function uh, 2x squared plus 3x minus 1, so a quadratic over a linear function x plus 1. We all should agree by now that x equals negative 1 would be the equation of the vertical asymptote. We can find that by setting the denominator equal to 0, solving for x, this is our restriction, we know x can't equal negative 1. What about horizontal asymptotes? Well. In the previous lesson, we looked at subbing in large numbers, infinity, into x and seeing what happens, what x approaches. We can try and do this the same way. Let's just pick some big numbers. Let's do f evaluated at 100, f evaluated at 1,000, f evaluated at 10,000. And why don't you sub those into this function? And if there's a horizontal asymptote, we should get close to the same number each time we do this. So when I sub f at 100 in to my function, I get about 209, sorry, 200.9. f evaluated 1,000 is 2,000.9. f evaluated at 10,000, that's 20,000.9. So when I'm subbing in really, really large positive numbers, this function is not approaching anything. It's just getting larger. Well, what about negative numbers? What if I did f evaluated at negative 100, f evaluated at negative 1,000, f evaluated at negative 10,000? What do I get? Well, you can check, but I get about negative 1,989 or negative 1,900, pardon me, negative 19,989 or negative 199,989. So again, these numbers aren't approaching anything. So we can conclude that there's no horizontal asymptote. If I throw this equation into Desmos to try and see what's happening, uh, it helps me a little bit because I can see that yes, this is indeed approaching the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, but as I look at my branches of the function, it keeps getting more negative, more positive as my x values get bigger, so there is no horizontal asymptote. It's kind of confirming what we saw when we crunched the numbers. So let's go back and try and analyze this a different way. What if we actually take this function and we do the division that it's being asked of us? So I take 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 and I actually divide it by x plus 1. So, synthetic division, bring the 2 down, 2 times 1 is 2, 3, take away 2 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1, take away 1 would be negative 2. So I get a remainder, which means this isn't a factor. And this lets me write a different statement. This lets me write that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 minus the remainder which is 2 or negative 2 over x plus 1. These two statements are equivalent, they're the same. Well let's consider this part of the function.
And let's consider that part of the function in relation to f of x. What happens if we graph the function in Desmos, 2x plus 1, that linear function? So all of a sudden, when I look at my original function, f of x, which is in green, and my linear function, 2x plus 1, what I divided out and got, I can see that the green function really looks like it's approaching that linear function. And it definitely is. Yeah, I can zoom in, I can see it's approaching it. So what does this mean to us? This means that 2x plus 1 is the oblique asymptote for the function f of x. So when I'm trying to find an oblique asymptote, when the degree of my numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, I do the division. I get my new function. And I take that linear piece in my function, in this case 2x plus 1, and that is the equation of my oblique asymptote. The remainder part doesn't really matter to me. All that matters is the equation of, uh, the equation of the oblique asymptote. If I was asking you to graph this by hand, you would still find the vertical asymptote. You would find the x and y intercepts the same way as we've been doing. So if I, for example, wanted to find the y intercept, I would set x equal to zero. And I think if I look at Desmos, my y intercept should be at negative one. Let's see. There's my y-intercept at negative 1. To find the x-intercept, you're probably going to have to do something like take the numerator and either try and factor it or use the quadratic formula to find the x-intercept.